Officially, my name is Petiti Bondabade, but everyone goes me Mimi. I am a pediatric neuro-oncologist um, and a scientist. So I actually work in Boston at the moment, um, looking after kids with brain tumors, but I also lead a research lab um, and we're focused on trying to find better treatments for kids with brain tumors. At the time, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. I knew I probably wanted to do pediatrics, uh, but I had no idea about the path that I'd end up taking. So I remember being absolutely fascinated by science and medicine during medical school. I actually did a Bachelor of Medical Science after my third year um, at Monash Medical Center. I spent a year studying um, premature babies and how they sleep and sleep arousal and then graduated and did my internship through Southern Health, so stayed in the Monash system before studying pediatric training through the Children's Hospital and Monash combined um, program. And it was really there that life sort of took the unexpected journeys where one of the first rotations I did was to the oncology ward um, and I met kids with brain tumors and um, met a child with a brain tumor um, and really realized that we don't have good treatments for, for brain tumors. So that actually um, inspired me to go back and I, I did a PhD um, in cancer biology, subspecialized in neuro-oncology and then moved to Boston in 2011 uh, to, to do some more training and then started my own lab here in 2017. So I definitely have a big connection to Monash. So my dad uh, moved to Australia in the 60s on a UN scholarship um, and finished high school in Australia. And like many of us have actually um, was affiliated with both Melbourne and, and Monash, but he did engineering and spoke very, very fondly of Monash. My sister and I have the six year gap, right? So it meant that when I started high school, she was studying medical school. I always got to see what she's doing, and that was an amazing inspiration. One of the things I loved about Manesh, and I think for her as well, was the clinical connection, um, which is why we, we wanted to get into the hospitals. My memories of being a medical student at Manesh was just being surrounded by amazing people. I found them very inspirational and exciting, and loved the science, loved the medicine, loved the clinical medicine. It was one of the reasons I, I went to Monash to start with was you get to have the clinical exposure a bit earlier in the Monash program. It has a real emphasis on what it's like to be a doctor. And I love those clinical experiences. Full disclosure, the first time I was in a hospital in first year medical school, and of course they were all my sister's friends because they had just graduated. I, I may have fainted as I was watching one of my sister's friends suture up someone's arm. So that was, I, I no longer faint in the hospitals. You know, the friendships I made at Monash are friendships for life. Um, the people you go through med school together, the ups and downs of, of medicine, you experience it together and they're my friends and will be my friends for life. And also the, the clinical staff that we met in the hospitals, many of them I still um, consider mentors or, or, and definitely colleagues. Watching my sister go through med school when I was in high school totally inspired me. I would watch her studying anatomy um, and training for her own exams and found it fascinating. I always got to see what she's doing and that was an amazing inspiration. My dad worked at CSIRO, he led a research group at CSIRO and so we spent many summers going to visit him in the lab and I'm sure that really influenced us in terms of passion in science. In terms of medicine I think it's learning about ourselves and you know and how how our bodies work by right, surrounding yourself with friends and families and colleagues and talking about it is how we cope and being in the lab is the biggest way to cope with that if if i can't save the kids today maybe we can save them tomorrow and there's nothing more motivating than coming into the lab and trying like if we try and try and try until something works the rate of discovery has been exponential over the last couple of decades where not only now do we have a better understanding what normal is we're, we're 
for the first time really understanding what goes wrong in the tumours to make the tumours grow. We're learning that childhood cancers are nothing like adult cancers uh, and they're something has gone wrong in the stage of development. So it's this interplay between mutations arising in cells at specific stages of development. And we're starting to see that really um, change things in the clinic. So now every child that comes to our clinic, we are sequencing their tumors in real time so that we know exactly what mutations are driving. And we're starting to see drugs that we can use and we still have a long way to go, but we're starting to see responses in some kids with brain tumors that I didn't even see five years ago. There are kids alive now because they're being diagnosed now. They, they were diagnosed five or 10 years ago um, and wouldn't be alive, which I think is just, we're rewriting those textbooks right now in real time. It's such a privileged job in terms of you meet families in their darkest hour and you see their kindness and you see their love and the fact they'll do anything and you become part of that family and you get to know them for that whole journey which for the kids that survive is amazing you watch watch them grow for the kids that don't survive it's heartbreaking but you hopefully can help the families through that and then you become part of that family and then to be able to do science to try and find the cure that is the hope in, in, in this and mentoring and teaching the next generation of scientists. There's so much hope in that as well. So I love the mentoring and teaching.